So, hello, and uh, I've been asked to give a bit of a tutorial about how I do um, wire wrapping on my proto boards. And uh, so I, I thought I'd start off with the basics um, of what I actually use um, to do this. And so let's have a look at the tools. I've got tinned copper wire. Um, I don't remember the gauge, but it's not so heavy. I think um, it's like 22 or 24 gauge tin copper wire. This is actually silver plated um, for better conductivity, but it's only because that's the only thing I could buy. Um, this is the 30 gauge wire and with a simple um, poly polyurethane cover. It's available in different colors. Um, I used to do everything in white. Don't know why, but I started off doing everything in white and then I realised it might be a little bit healthier and better for my eyes if I use colours. So now I've got a bit of a colour scheme where I use red and purple for plus or minus like 12 or plus or minus 15 depending on the board rail requirements. Then I use an orange for plus 5. Don't know why, I just chose orange. And I use a plus a yellow for plus 3.3 .3. so I should be able to tell what I'm doing um, I also have a black which you think would be for ground but it's not because all my grounds are silver so this is actually the minus 5 rail um, should have chose a different color really but it's all I had available at the time and then white is used for basically everything else um, I don't have any other uh, reason for it is just that's what I started with and I quite like it and it's not too difficult to debug it. So that's the wire that I use, tinned copper. Um, I use 0.8 millimeter solder, tin, um, tin lead com combination, uh, which I can buy locally but apparently is made in Poland. It's very good. Very cheap, very simple snips. These cost me about £1.50 or €2, Euros, whatever you want to call it. Um, I go through a heck of a lot of them. Um, I just bought five more pairs yesterday because uh, this is my only working pair because they do snap. And I'm a bit of an idiot because you know what it's like when you pick up a tool. It doesn't matter if it's not designed for the job sometimes. You'll use it on things. So I tend to cut things which are a bit too heavy for it and uh, cock things up and break the tips. Uh, but still, I've always got another pair kicking around somewhere. So these are very cheap. Model PL 170. Uh, Model 170 pliers from... I don't even know what that says. Picaf. <laughs> Picaf? I have no idea. But they're, they're available locally in my store for like uh, £1.50. Or 65 grievance here in Ukraine. This um, is just a hole punch sort of thing. I don't know where I got it from. Found it in a toolbox one day. Um, it's a little bit bent but it's very useful because I can put it in the board like that and basically guide a wire around it. Or I can push wires out of the way for example. Let me take it one I'm working on. So if that's a board I've got and I need to see what's going on I can I can move things out of the way with this quite easily and look up what's going on. So it's useful. Um, like I say, if I'm doing some wiring and I want to keep a wire away, say I'm soldering, I could just push that in there and I can solder where I want to do, then take it out and let the wire go back so I don't burn through it. That's what I try, and try to tend to do. This wire's a bit of a, this board's a bit of a mess. It's not as neat as I'd normally be, but it is only a test board. It's a prototype, so it's not important to be tidy. It just needs to be functional. So. And you can see the different colours there. You can see the yellow, the orange for the 5 volts, the red and blue go into op amps and things. And there's even a black minus 5 volt going all the way down to a couple of quad VCAs down here. And I've cheated. I've used black there for ground. I don't know why. So it's prototype. It's not, uh, it's not standard. Um, and you can see the tin copper making a sort of ground plane throughout the board as well. So anyway, back to the tools. That's my little pretty pokey thing. 
these are some tiny little pliers which I use basically on the protoboard when I'm running tin copper and I can make a bend etc and solder solder it down and make a bend and go around the board so that's basically what I use that for or them for I should say um, this is the star of the show this is my little set of wire cutters and you might notice some lines drawn in felt tip at different positions so there's position six that's position four position eight and the whole thing's position 10 and it goes to 12 if I decide to do that now that's my wire stripper this I've had since I was about 17 16 17, probably 17 18 so it's probably 44 years old something like that got it at ICL when I worked there and originally we used to use this pink wire at ICL which is super good um, you can probably still get this I don't know I've never seen it I've never been able to find it since got all the markings on the packaging but I don't think they make it but it doesn't burn easily it's really really good for use with a soldier iron close by and uh, that's all I've got left of this reel and it's the only reel I, I ever had so I don't use it anymore I just, to, just keep it for nostalgic sakes so that's my wire stripper now I've looked online there is a sort of modern equivalent of this um, uh, I don't know how much it is but there is one available it's really really good for this 30 gauge wire I'll show you why take a piece of 30 gauge and you can see there's nothing there stick it in pull it's done can't really see against the white there you go it's better maybe against the dark background I don't know there you go now what I can do is using these measures I get a rough idea between chips what distances I need to run so if I want a measure of four I just put it in and pull at four and pull again at four pull again at four and pull again and that gives me multiple breaks in the wire at equal distances and I always have a little bit on the end so I don't pull pull the end off and as you can see there's there's gaps in the wire now now that allows me to just do that and then that and that and it means I can do little cable runs between components where I need to just tagging them together very useful when you've got um, say I don't know multiple address lines or something and you want to connect them all together um, on say, say decoder chips uh, demux chips encode um, 405 ones 406 sevens etc you can make little runs between them obviously the 406 sevens the runs would be quite a bit further spaced apart but for 405 ones are probably ideal and like I say I can use this and just place it over and I can work out the distance that I need and sometimes I'll do runs of like a four or six and eight or two and I'll just remember try and remember it in my head what distances I need sometimes you know, I even write it down if it's very complicated and I'll pull that run of wire in those distances um, and that works fine I, I, I did nearly all of this um, voice board for this uh, bit one clone using that method I think I've actually got some of the runs written down because they were so complicated um, but that gives you an idea of what I use so if you can get hold of a tool like this because I think standard wire strippers are just a waste of time if you can get hold of a tool like this and you can get this wire which is I think it's very easily available on um, AliExpress etc it's not I don't think it's wire wrap because my my definition of wire wrap was um, an enamel coated wire that you used to wrap around a very stiff pin and it would sort of like cut through the wire and make a contact and you'd wire wrap a board manually the wire wrap tool well this isn't a wire wrap tool this certainly isn't wire wrapping wire and you, you, didn't, you didn't really solder when you were wire wrapping whereas I solder all the time as for soldered irons 
people say, oh, you must use a special soldering iron. Well, no, not really. This is it. Standard Antex XS25. It's very dirty. I've not even cleaned the tip. There's no water in my uh, in my pot. Um, I've used these for 20 years, probably more. Um, I used to have a, a nice Weller desktop soldering iron, but that gave up the ghost after 20 years, and I moved to these things, and they're absolutely fine. Just use a nice wet sponge. Um, as you can see, my sponge is bone dry, but um, temperatures here have been plus 38, plus 40, and we've had very little electricity, uh, so everything's bone dry or really, really hot. And this is the first time where the temperature's gone below 32, and I've managed to get in to my workshop and we've had some electricity. So that's basically it. I also use a magnifying glass. Um, this is more for um, checking components on the top, make sure I've got the, uh, the right part, which is easy to make a mistake on. And then when I've finished the board, I use this for debugging because I lift the board over and especially around an op amp where you've been bending legs and things, you can use this to see um, whether you've actually bent the leg far enough over to touch the op amp pin and made a solder connection because I found that most of my faults, and there's not many to be honest, but most of my faults are usually where I've put an op amp in, I've put the resistors um, for the feedback loop, bent them over, and I've soldered the resistor to the board, but I've not actually managed to make contact with the op amp pin because I'm stupid and I've not looked carefully and I go back and I debug it and I realize oh yeah I've just not made connection there and that's really the the bulk of the faults that I have if if any um, I usually get one or two maybe per board that I make it's no big deal but you know it's annoying that it's um you don't pick these up but that's what they use the magnifying glass for I've also got a desktop magnifier which um, I was always very reluctant to use. Um, and it's only recently I've started using it because my eyes are getting a bit bad now. Uh, so I use this sometimes when I'm soldering just to see the board better. Uh, but, and I use it for soldering SMD parts to, to adapters. But other than that, I don't really use that one. So that's the first part. Um, I'll do another video and go on to the actual soldiering on boards and how I do it with the wires and hopefully I haven't bored everyone.